what this does is that it uh, I'll just remove and make the label nice. What this does is that enables um, me to uh, to auto attach um, um, an action to uh, media file folders inside our system. So, for instance, if I go into our media area, now normally I wouldn't have a uh, a browse images uh, feature in here, uh, but I've uh, asked for uh, an action to be attached to a media folder it's called browse images, um, and this uh, the report uh, function action enables me to go and call one of uh, my XSLT functions uh, inside Composite C1. I'll not go into much detail in that area. Just um, um, uh, note that this is a what call a flexible area uh, with a lot of uh, uh, developer uh, possibilities to uh, to define customized uh, UI, uh, customized XML uh, renderings. Um, so. This is uh, pointing to a function called demo image browser. It's um, something I can uh, work with down here. This is where I added it. So this is an XSLT function. It's taking uh, uh, some information about a media folder, or you call it a data reference. It's uh, doing some functions calls, which is getting me image uh, XML. Then it has uh, an XSLT template. It's a fairly simple template which uh, goes through the image XML and uh, generates some HTML for me. So uh, if I go here and uh, do a um, uh, browse images uh, on my uh, sample folders uh, folder, well, I get my function invoked, and uh, this is what my XSLT is producing. So this is another way where you can. Uh, uh, quickly customize uh, the UI in, in, in Composite uh, simply by doing two things. One, uh, go create an XML file like this, and this is basically all you need. In this case, we have uh, 15 lines of XML. Um, and uh, then go create a uh, XSLT function like this. So we are uh, When we work with this, uh, we also, of course, have uh, IntelliSense. Um, uh, a, a quick note to developers, if you don't have IntelliSense, all you need to do is uh, go into the Composite folder, then open the Schemas folder and the Trees folder, and uh, just double-click the, uh, uh, the schema for the tree, uh, and uh, then you have uh, IntelliSense enabled. You're also able to go and uh, define uh, uh, tree structures which can uh, be attached below data elements inside or other elements inside our system. So, uh, for instance, uh, I'll quickly browse to a page. Here I have a page, and below that I have a small application for uh, working with block entries uh, with some date foldering and our data items. And below a data item, uh, we have comments because someone commented on our blog and so on. And this entire uh, structure we have here and uh, the definition of it is uh, captured in, uh, in this file. So this is uh, what a total of uh, 51 lines of XML. Um, Defining that we want a blog entries folder, this one. We want a command on it, which enables us to add a blog entry. Then we want some uh, date driven folders, which are these ones. And inside those, we want uh, the actual blog entries to show up. Now, also uh, below a blog entry, we would actually like to have a comment folder. And uh, uh, inside the comment folder, we would like to show uh, comments. And here we have uh, an example of uh, filtering. We would like to only show the comments which uh, relate to uh, the blog post we're showing uh, higher up in the uh, in the tree. Now we have a lot of uh, uh, well, we have uh, three kinds of uh, filters. One thing is a, a, a field filter where I can, uh, for instance, go say. Uh, the, the title of something should be a specific uh, value. Uh, I also have the ability to do a parent filtering, which is uh, the most uh, commonly type used for this. 
And then again, uh, you can go and uh, utilize the uh, uh, function system inside uh, CoverSite C1, where you can go and, and define highly customized link queries uh, that works against our link data layer, uh, link expressions, and, and have them uh, invoked right in here. Okay, so uh, just to give you a, a, a little uh, uh, last peek of what we can do with this. So let's say uh, I would like to, uh, like to have my, my, my simple news demo. I would like to have that uh, show up as a new perspective. Well, I will attach my uh, tree to the perspective root. So if I go into... Uh, so as you'll notice that it disappears from my content list, then I can go into my profile. Now this introduces a new perspective, so uh, I have to give myself access to this one. So I go and save that. And uh, voila, we have a new perspective introduced in Composite C1, and it contains our news items. So this is a fairly flexible uh, way of uh, working with uh, C1 console applications. Um, it's uh, XML editing with IntelliSense. Uh, you have uh, validation with uh, Verboost logging. I'll just quickly show you that because it's, uh, it's a nice little feature. I'll start my logger. Attach to localhost. And I'll quickly show you an example of, uh, of how we can pick up on errors. So, for instance, let's imagine that uh, I misspelled a news type in here. Well, I can immediately see in my logger that uh, the type could not be found. Okay, so um, we have good uh, logging uh, information. Uh, it's a simple flat file, uh, XML. Uh, you put it in a, a folder called tree definitions. The C1 console will pick up on uh, new files automatically and do, uh, pick up on changes automatically and give you instant feedback. You simply declare what structure you want uh, using nested uh, XML elements. You can mix elements of different types uh, in one tree. Um, you saw that with the block and the block comments and so on. Um, you can uh, define simple elements, data elements, or data elements uh, that uh, drive uh, foldering. You can use commands like uh, uh, add, edit, delete. Uh, you can do customized uh, Windows workflows. You can also uh, invoke ASP.NET pages, uh, URLs, it could be a PHP and so on. Uh, and uh, you can also uh, use uh, XSLT functions, at the function layer uh, in couple sites you want to generate UI. Um, you can also use the C1 function system to do uh, to use or create uh, advanced data filters. Um, you can also do uh, customized editing forms. I didn't show you this feature, but uh, the, the forms that get auto-generated by uh, when doing a data type, uh, you can go and customize that. I'll just quickly uh, show you an example of, of such a customization. So. Uh, here we have uh, settings and contents. Well, uh, let me just say I would like to switch those around. I'll go to my news element. Uh, I would actually like to have the uh, content element as the first element in my tab. Well, I go back. Oh, yeah. In order to see you change, I have to close the editor and start it again. But uh, now we start up with the content tab. You can uh, do sorting, uh, grouping uh, with the dates and reference fields and ranges and so on. Uh, and an important and nice feature is uh, it fully supports the security features in uh, CoverSite C1. So let's imagine that we uh, would actually like to uh, be able to go and, uh, and control who can uh, work with uh, Uh, block entries. Well, we just go and say, well, right here, we actually don't want editors to have these uh, abilities. They should only be able to read. So 
So this is uh, how you build uh, uh, tree-driven applications in Composite C1. It's XML uh, with a lot of uh, extensibility points. You can use uh, auto-generated uh, items. You can uh, use Windows Workflow Foundation, ASP.NET pages, XSLT functions, and so on to generate UI. Thank you.